up you guys? I am back for a new video today and um, today I'm going to be talking about how to care for your introvert. Um, I know this is kind of a more basic video but I felt that it was really important to discuss because I realized on my channel that I've never just had a plain video about introverts. It's always been um, more focused on um, MBTI. So yeah, I kind of wanted today to talk about um, introverts and how to understand introverts. If you are an extrovert, if you're a family member, a significant other, or just a friend in an introvert's life, some of the things that you can do to care for them, to make them feel loved, and um, ultimately just have a better relationship with your introvert. Um, so I kind of want to start off the video talking about how introverts sometimes can be misunderstood in our society and it's really not a um, you know special snowflake thing or like boohoo introverts I the point of the video is not to feel bad for introverts but really just to have a better relationship with an introvert um, and as I was kind of reading something the other day I read an article that said that introverts make up like 25% of the population which I don't know if that's accurate, it could be wrong numbers and I probably need to look at other sources. And I'm sure depending on what country you live in, um, those numbers would vary. Um, because I have found some truth, at least in my opinion, that different countries tend to have a culture that is um, more introvert or extroverted in nature. Like I tend to think that United States um, tends to be more extroverted oriented and kind of praises extroverts in our society. Um, and another country would be an example of that is like Australia. I've heard that it's a very extroverted country. And then I think about places like Norway and Sweden and even maybe like New Zealand that tend to be a bit more introverted in nature. So depending on where you live, these numbers might change. But the point is, introverts tend to be a lower percentage in general than extroverts. And this can cause a lot of people in society to not understand us, maybe even judge us, or even feel hurt by our actions. So I kind of want to talk about that today. And um, kind of my experience with extroverts as an introvert. Obviously, I'm married to an extrovert. My dad is all the way on the spectrum extrovert like probably the most extroverted you can get he is definitely that way and then my brother's also extroverted um so i've just had a lot of people in my life sometimes where there can be miscommunications and misunderstandings um and one of the ways you can love your introvert better is not getting offended when they need their space and when they need alone time um and really just creating that space for them with no judgment and allowing them to be alone and to take as much time as they need. And what would make me even feel even more loved is to actually be a part of making sure that I get that introverted time and even scheduling it out and making sure I stick to it. Because um, as an introvert, I often feel pressure to be extroverted a lot of the time, whether it be from my family or from friends. I feel like I let people down when I cannot fully be present and spend time with them. And honestly, it's not nothing that I can control. My energy tank just starts to get lower and lower and lower until I'm not even able to form coherent sentences or have thoughts about anything or really even be enjoying the individual in the present. My my mind, well, as an as an INFJ, and this is obviously different for other introverts, my mind just starts to default into NI and I get heavier and heavier in my daydreaming and I tend to just check out. Um, and I also get irritable and so I know for me, when I start to do one of those two things, if I start getting really irritable around people or if I start to just like daydream and just can't even focus, I know that I need alone time or I'm not going to be very loving to the people around me. So this has often been something hard for extroverts to understand. I've had friendships or relationships where I say something like, oh, I really just need alone time and I just need to go be by myself for like a, a day or two and then come back to you fully fresh and ready to give you my attention. And I think this can be hard for extroverts to understand because they just don't understand how great our need is for that quiet time. 
and how detrimental it can be if we do not get that quiet time. It's just super unhealthy for us. It would be like saying to an extrovert, for the next couple of days, I want you to stay in this room completely alone, isolated, and not getting to interact with any people. They would slowly start to feel worse and worse and worse, probably more depressed, not like themselves. And the same goes for me when I am in an extroverted environment for too long. I start to feel awful. I even, I even start to get physical symptoms where I start to feel sick. So growing up, I remember my earliest memories, uh, not really understanding extroversion and introversion yet, but on the weekends when I would wake up, I would stay in bed for like probably an hour to two hours reading or watching something and just being alone. And I remember, uh, this was probably like junior high or high school, I would do this all the time. After a long week, I would just wake up Saturday morning. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I wanted to be in my room. I wanted to be in my pajamas. And I remember my brother coming to my door and knocking and knocking and being like, what are you doing in there? Why are you just spending all this time in your bed? Like really critical. Obviously at the time he was young, so he just didn't understand, but he would constantly make comments like that and say stuff at my door and be like, why are you in your bed all morning? And he could not understand that I just wanted to sit in my bed and read or watch something and to him or listen to music and to him that was so weird and he used to always make comments on it and kind of the same thing for my dad like if I would spend too much time in my room he would kind of knock on my door and be like let's go do something come on come on let's get out and I'd be like no like I'm fine everything's fine I just need my alone time and often extroverts will mistake alone time as if something is wrong with you where in fact it's I mean sometimes it could be the case but more often than not, everything's fine. Um, and I remember growing up, my dad would constantly ask me if I was okay. He is an ESTP personality type and a highly extroverted personality. Um, and we'd be in the car going to school every day because he would take me to school and he'd be like, he would always ask me what was wrong if I was quiet. And I would constantly be like, dad, nothing is wrong. Like, I just like being quiet. Um, and I think sometimes it's hard for extroverts to understand. It's like, just because we're not talking or we're, um, you know, it doesn't mean that anything's necessarily wrong. I mean, that can happen, but it is rare. Um, and I think sometimes it's hard for extroverts to understand that I actually like the quiet. Like I can go an entire car ride without saying a word and I'm in my happy place especially if I have music on. To me, the best car ride is me sitting in the car, listening to music with headphones and not really talking to anybody. Obviously, there's times where I will like to converse, but that's really fun to me. Sitting and daydreaming and listening to something is what I like to do. And um, so if you're with an introvert um, and you have a friendship, maybe this would clarify it for you that like, Create space for them to be alone and don't judge them for needing it. I feel like the thing that's often hard for introverts is we constantly feel judged for needing to take care of ourselves. Um, and self-care is so important for us and it looks so much different than a lot of people. And I think sometimes there's judgment there. I've, I've had friends be confused if I like needed to go off for a couple days. Um, you know, if, if I'm at family events, I just kind of want to be alone or, you know, even though my husband understands me and knows about my MBTI, he often still will kind of struggle with not understanding that I need that time. Another thing about introverts that I want to discuss is to not be offended if we don't want to go to large social gatherings all the time. This can be a conflict in um, romantic relationships where the extrovert will want to go to all these loud events with lots of people around his friends, groups, concerts, bars, clubs, all of that. And to them, it's like, yeah, this is so fun. And to an introvert, it can be an absolute drag at times. I'm not saying that sometimes we don't enjoy that because I do. I do like going to concerts because I love music and I do like going to bars at times. And I'll even on occasion, but I, if I'm honest, I don't really enjoy it. We'll go to a club with my husband because he likes to go. Um, but this can be really hard for an extrovert not to understand because they're like, why don't you want to get out and do fun stuff? And what they don't understand is that our idea of a fun time is for me personally, Netflix, wine, 
good food, staying at home, and having deep conversations with friends on a Friday night. Like, that is my ideal. I want to go get good food, I want to get a bottle of wine, and I want to watch Netflix, or I want to sit at home with one of my close friends and just talk one-on-one. -on -one. To me, that is fun. Going out in loud environments is not fun. And I will go, and sometimes I will have a good time, but it's not as frequent as what my husband would like. So this, I feel like, is a big source of conflict in a romantic relationship if you're with an introvert, extrovert. I think um, you really have to understand one another and come to compromises. And I'm saying this for the introvert as well. It's not just the extrovert co compromising. The introvert also needs to compromise. And I've had to make lots of compromises in our relationship where there'll be times when I don't want to go out. But my husband will really want me to go out and I will go. And, you know, um, I love going to bars with just him and I one-on-one. -on -one, but if, like, he wants me to go to a club, I usually, it's like pulling teeth for me. I just don't want to go. And even though I love to dance and anytime I go to a club, I will dance the whole time because I do love dancing. It's just not this, the thing that I always default to doing. Um, so this has been something that we've had to understand with one another. It's like, you know, I'm not going to want to go out a lot. And, um, he's had to kind of be okay with that. And something that I would say, if you're in a romantic relationship, with that dynamic is to encourage your extrovert to go out with other friends. And um, I think some couples might have insecurities around this, but honestly, if you're an introvert, to compromise, you're gonna have to give your extrovert a lot of freedom. Like I don't, I allow Caleb to go to bars and clubs without me with his friends and I'm fine about it. And honestly, we just have that trust and I encourage him to go out and do very extroverted things all the time. But if you're in a relationship and you're introvert and you expect your extrovert to always do what you do and not let them go out, um, it's going to become a huge problem in your relationship and you're going to probably resent one another. And you shouldn't ask an extrovert to do that, in my opinion, because that's how they're wired. It's about understanding one another and letting each person be free in what they like doing. So oftentimes on a Friday night, not all the times because he actually really likes to hang back with me as well, but there'll be some weekends where I encourage him to go out and I'm going to stay home and watch Netflix and we're both in our happy places and we're having fun and there's no resentment towards each other and we kind of encourage each other in that way. Um, I would say another example of introvert and extrovert uh, miscommunications is um, even in friendships. So sometimes I'll hang out with a friend and I'll spend like several hours with that person and then for, for maybe like a week or two I won't even reach out to them because I feel like I got all my time in with that person. But when I'm with that person I'm very present, I dedicate a lot of time and I, you know, I'm really intentional but it's not, I think sometimes in a friendship it's not the type of friendship dynamic where I'm going to hang out with them like every other day. And that's just me personally. I'm someone who can see my friend and the next week not need to see them. And I think sometimes this can cause hurt feelings and friendships. Um, so if you're in a friendship, keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of talking about some of the mishaps, but I think this will bring more understanding on how to really care for your introverted friend. Um, create space for them to introvert and don't judge them for needing it. When they're quiet, don't constantly ask if they are okay. I mean, sometimes there is something wrong, but you kind of discern if they're constantly saying they're fine, believe them when they're fine. Another thing I want to bring up is that introverts do like to listen a lot. And I often in conversations, unless it's something I'm extremely passionate about and I know a lot about, I will kind of default to the more listening role, which is great. And I don't mind it at all. But... I would say if you find your introvert constantly listening to you, maybe kind of check in with them and be like, hey, well, you know, I really appreciate it when people, after I've been listening to them for a long time, start to ask me questions because it tends to be more of a healthy dynamic because I will naturally just default to listening. And so I think a way to care for your introvert is um, to make sure you're reciprocating questions back to them and also... Another thing that uh, I feel really loved 
buy that extroverts sometimes do is checking in with me. So if we're out somewhere and it's a crowd and I don't know anybody, um, to, co to check in with me makes me feel very loved and very safe. How are you doing? Like, do you want to leave at this time? Like, are you okay staying here? Um, another thing to care for your introvert when you're out is to make sure to not like leave them socially hanging um, if you're in a big crowd where the introvert doesn't know anybody. So it's already hard enough for me to go out with new people that I don't know. I'm already shy and not fully myself because it takes me a long time to warm up to new people. So if I'm with someone, a friend or um, like my husband and I go out in a crowd and he just leaves or my friend just leaves and lets me be alone with all these new people, that is very stressful on me and it causes me a lot of anxiety. Now, maybe um, not all introverts are this way, but I certainly know for me that causes me stress. So be aware when you're an extroverted crowd to not just leave the introvert if you know they're pretty introverted, kind of hang around them. I'm not saying you have to literally like watch their every move and follow them around, but make sure that like most of the time you're not just leaving them alone. Because if we don't know these people, we're not like you where all of a sudden we're like, yeah, I want to talk to people and like just fully feel comfortable like a lot of extroverts do. Like when my husband's around new people, that's not even a thought of his. He's just like, yeah, let me talk to people like... There's not a lot of fear there. For me, I could be like so stressed out about it. Um, so yeah, that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, also, be careful not to share uh, really personal information around new people. I know for me, like I'm very private and when an extroverted personality like shares all these intimate stuff that we were talking about or things that I'm passionate about, I get very uncomfortable. Um, those things tend to be reserved for people that I know deeply and are more private and eventually I might share all that but with a new group of people I'm not um, inclined to share all that up front and um, I would say also that um, goes along the lines with criticism. So don't getting in fights or having conflict in front of new people is a, like a huge no for me. Like if there's an issue that you have with me, pull me away and privately talk to me. But to say stuff in a public setting that's personal or it's criticism, I don't think many introverts do really well with that. Um, and I think extroverts need to be willing to keep things private because introverts get really uncomfortable and um yeah so I think those are some things that I kind of just wanted to bring up in this video maybe I'll do kind of a separate video of like I don't know I kind of touched on some conflict maybe I'll do a separate video that's just conflicts that can happen with extroverts and introverts and how to kind of um avoid them which I kind of touched on in this video but yeah um if you have any more tips, please feel free to write them down below. And yeah, let me know if you'd like me to do a video that's just on conflict between extrovert, extroverts and introverts. Because I did touch upon it, but I feel like we could have a whole video really going in depth on how to avoid conflict. Um, so yeah, let me know. Okay, guys, well, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!